today we're spinning the wheel again. Pinterest is going to give me something to create. Hello, my lovely ravens. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel. Just like last time, I am going to go to Pinterest after spinning the wheels. It needs to have two walls and a floor, and then it also needs to speak to me as in, do I really want to make this? Yes or no? I've added a, a room spinner to see what a room we're going to create. Let's spin the wheel, shall we? We get Autumn Academia. An attic. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's just go to Pinterest and see what it comes up with. This looks like uh, an attic. So does this. Be fair. Um, I kind of like this one. Attic retreat. And it came up in Autumn Academia. So let's let's create this one. Autumn Academia attic. Um, I prefer to uh, prepare my projects by putting stuff in my sketchbook and printing everything out. So here I have a few more rooms that I came across on this same page. And this room will not be the main room that we saw, but a little bit of a mishmash between all the things that you see here. Let's start with the floor. All these uh, pop sticks, or actually these are coffee stirrers. They're a little bit uh, skinnier than pop sticks. I am going to cut them down into floorboards, sand all the edges, and then glue them down with wood glue. After drying and cutting off the excess, I am going to sand the entire floor down. I really need to invest in one of those blocks, what you can sand, to put sandpaper around and then sand wooden surfaces with. With my laser cutter, I cut these walls. By the way, there is a big Father's Day sale now on the Xtool website. I will leave my affiliate link in the description box below so you can go and check it out. I get a small commission from that if you purchase through that link. Now, the wall detail, I am going to add some paneling also with these stirrers, coffee stirrers and um, yeah, just laying that out in the pattern and gluing them on. With some watered down acrylic paint, I am going to cover the entire surface and then wiping that down whilst it's still wet. So I reveal the wood grain and this will give it a beautiful finish. I am lightly sanding the surface again before putting on this Canuba polish on the entire floor and then wiping off the excess to give it that light wooden sheen. I am using the same staining method on the wood panels on the wall and in between the paneling I'm going to add this light beige. I actually make it a little bit lighter because this is too yellow for my liking. And I'm going to add this paint to all the panels in and then with a chalk pastel, I am going to add shading in between all the sides of the paneling. And here you can clearly see the difference between the treated and untreated ones. And then of course, adding the Canuba wax on the panels. I first thought to extend the wood to the, t the very ceiling of this slanted part. But then I was like, I'm going to add wallpaper because this actually really goes well with the Autumn Academia theme. With one of these distress markers, I'm going to add stains just around the edge and a little bit uh, on top of the paper as well. I am just adding it on to the edges and then wetting my finger with some water. You can also do this with a brush to distribute the brown color. You can also do this with watercolor or... Then moving on to one of the accessories in the room. A little trunk. You can find the SVG files for this little trunk. And also a file in there as well as a PDF to make it into cardstock in my Etsy store or on my website. 
All the links I am mentioning and all the materials that I've used can be found in the description box below if you wanted to purchase anything. Now, this trunk comes just as is and you are basically free to add any details you want yourself. What I'm doing here, I cut some narrow strips out of cardstock and I'm gluing them on and adding detail to the trunk. I have these little rhinestones that I'm going to glue on as well. I could have left them in this color, but I decided to make them a more shimmering gold instead of more like a sparkly that they are now. And I am peeling off the sticky backing and gluing them on with wood glue. Before I start painting the entire trunk, I'm going over the little rhinestones with a brush on primer, just so I know that the paint will stick to the surface. I then paint the entire trunk in a dark brown and add details with chalk pastels. The parts in between I'm painting over with a gloss finish, just so it looks a little bit like a leather look. And then of course the rhinestones need to be painted gold and adding some final aging spots. And then the trunk is finished. For this Autumn Academia Attic, of course, we need to have a bookcase. So here I am building the bookcase that is also a pattern that you can buy on my website or on my Etsy store. And I'm putting this together with wood glue. I'm using my one, two, three blocks to keep everything square. This one I painted before I put it together so I can wipe off the excess and have that wood stain on the wood grain. Then adding that final detail to the front of the bouquets to make it a little bit more of an ornate piece. I also add the same wax to the bouquets on the outside. And what is bookcase without books? So I did not have any books in my stash anymore. Well, I have a few. You will see a Harry Potter set that someone sent me a while ago. But um, yeah, I had to make all these books from scratch. So here's some chipboard and uh, the um, books. I'm just folding over the chipboard and then cutting them out. Sometimes I double layer the chipboard to make it thicker, the thicker books. And then, uh, yeah, just cutting it out and making lots of them. And here is the final bookcase. It's always so satisfying how this turns out. course we can't have an attic and a reading nook without a good chair so I took this pattern from Aira from Bentley House Minis I've used this chair as well in the Ravenclaw common room I will leave a link down below where you can find it yeah this chair is just great for all kinds of purposes really uh, you can also adjust the, the pattern a little bit if you want a lower back chair but I kept it the same as it was and then I had to pick the fabric I went with one that I thought was more like a, um, I don't know, it was not a really an orange one, but I'm gonna go with the green one on the right. And it turns out really, really nice, to be honest. Um, I think the orange with the green is just a really pleasing aesthetic. Even though I had less fun working on this one than the Parisian one, and that's mainly because there are so many browns in here again. Anyway, moving on to the chair again, and this is um, 
some bedding that I'm adding on the side. Aira has a beautiful instructional video on this chair as well. And like I said, I've used this pattern before in the Ravenclaw common room. But here you can see me putting it together. I use wood glue for this chair to put it together. I don't have tacky glue here in Australia. I don't know what it is. Um, I can probably get it, but it's probably so expensive. But if you want to use tacky glue, I will leave a link in the description box down below. You all know that I like a good tufted chair, so I'm going to add tufts to this chair as well. I'm following the grid of my cutting mat and just drawing that out on the back of the chair. And then placing wherever I need the knots, the French knots to go. On the other side, I'm going to cover that with the quilt batting and the fabric, and then I can add the French knots that will act as buttons to the chair. This is what the back looks like, and here we have the front as well. I will show you one or two stitches. You just push it through, and then make the French knot, and then push it back, and then they look like little buttons. I found this trim in my stash, and it is the perfect green to go with this chair. So instead of uh, using the fabric to cover the fronts there, I'm going to use this trim. For the chair legs, I'm using a piece of dowel, like in Aira's instruction video, and add these to the base as well. I'm staining them brown with some watered down acrylic paint, or actually with some, I use some ink here. I don't know why I did that, I probably didn't have a, um, acrylic paint ready to go. And then I also wanted to make an ottoman, so I'm doing the same thing here, well, sort of. For the cushioning, I'm using a big sponge because I thought that would add a bit more um, tufting detail. But in the end, it was just the same as the batting. I am using this corduroy fabric. It's very fine corduroy, so it um, it looks okay in miniature. And then I used the same technique, really, uh, to make this little ottoman with the same kind of legs as well. I added the same trim as to the chair and I really love how this little thing came out. You all love the crocheted pieces that I made in the previous Parisian room video. So I thought, why not give it another bash with uh, crocheting another piece for this room? This is going to be a basket for yarn because um, the person that lives in this attic or owns this attic can probably be a knitter or a crocheter or um, yeah, why not? I um, also did some knitting on some tiny skewers here because uh, I am a sucker for punishment apparently. This was hard and I haven't knitted in a hot minute. So um, yeah, there it is, um, tiny knitting needles. I glued some tiny beads at the end of the, uh, they are tiny toothpicks really. And um, here we have some knitting needles. Of course we have to add some yarn as well. So from a piece of straw and some yarn and cotton that I have lying around that I actually never use, I'm just going around this straw with a needle and then I wrap a tiny piece of paper, a strip of paper around it, so it looks like a tiny ball of yarn. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? And of course I had to fill up the basket with all different colors, so um, here we have it. I think they are really, really cute and one of the best things I've made for this miniature. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this second video in the Pinterest pick series. It was a little bit closer to my usual aesthetic and I hope next time we get something that is a bit more outside of my comfort zone to see what I can come up with. All my social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!